Hello, New Life Austin. I appreciate you tuning in to this video. I know this is not our usual format, and it's a little different for us to communicate in this way, but I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. Of course, this is the time when we would usually be in worship together, so uh, we're accustomed to spending time together already on a Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, so thank you very much for your time and for making this a priority. And if you're watching this uh, from the link that you received in Facebook, uh, hit the like button down below. Let us know you're here. And if you have questions, you can post those in comments. We'll respond to those. Uh, we'll try to respond to those in real time. If we can't, we'll get back with you as soon as we can. But let us know you're here. Uh, there are many of you all over Austin and some of you outside of Austin. We welcome you to join us. Of course, for those of you that are not part of New Life Austin, this is very much a uh, family talk for New Life Austin. And so the things that we're talking about are very specific for our church community and our church family. We welcome you to join in and be a, a part of that. Of course, you may be facing some of these same challenges in your church wherever you're at. And so we're glad that you're with us um, as well. As you know, yesterday I sent an email to the church community saying that we would uh, cancel our church services today because of a recommendation by the city of Austin. However, last night the mayor issued uh, an order that made that effective policy for the city of Austin. In short, the mayor issued an order saying that no groups of 250 or more can meet in a single place in Austin. Obviously, this changes things uh, for our church community and how we'll gather how we'll meet, and it limits our ability to conduct services as we have been conducting services. I want to go over with you what that means for our church, how we're going to respond, and what the path forward looks like from here. And I want you to listen attentively, take notes. Of course, if you have questions, you're welcome to contact our office. We have this recorded so you can rewind, you can watch again, you can listen again. And so this obviously impacts our church community. We have changed our schedule this week, so I want you to listen carefully to the details of that particularly, and we have communicated this in other formats, and we will continue to do so, but we have uh, decided not to have any of our regularly scheduled events this week. We are taking this time to formulate an effective ministry plan for our church and to avoid the confusion as to what events may be carrying on, what events may be canceled we decided to simply cancel all events, especially seeing that this is spring break week and many are going to be traveling and uh, our, our events would probably be a little uh, less attended than usual anyway. So we thought it would be the least, uh, confuse, least confusing to simply cancel the events from this week, keep you informed, communicate with you, take this time to meet with our leaders and formulate an effective plan to move forward with ministry for our church community. We will, however, be posting a video like this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. We are scheduled to have the McFarlands, missionaries to Ireland, with us on Wednesday night. However, since we will not be having our service, we're going to have a recorded conversation with the McFarlands about missionary work, about Ireland. Uh, and so I think you're going to enjoy that. So tune back in at 7.30 on Wednesday night, and we'll have that roundtable uh, that we'll have with the McFarlands. I think you'll be blessed. As far as ministry goes moving forward, our staff is working diligently to formulate a plan that ensures that ministry to New Life Austin continues. If you are in need during this time, I want to assure you that if you need prayer, if you need pastoral care, you can let us know. All of the usual lines of communication remain. You can call our office, 512-832-5433. If for whatever reason no one answers the phone, leave a message. We check our messages frequently. You can also email the church, New Life Austin, um, or office at newlifeaustin.com. You can email the church at office at newlifeaustin.com, and we'll return that very promptly. All of the regular lines of communication that you have with our leaders, people that you contact on a regular basis, 
uh, whether it's your life group leader, a minister, or friend in the church, all of those lines of communication remain intact. So I want you to know that you have the same access to us that you've always had. If you need prayer, we're available to pray with you. If you need counsel, guidance, or some other a need arises in your life, we're available. None of that has changed, and we will continue to provide that pastoral care. The second thing is that beginning next Sunday, we will begin to live stream our services on Facebook. Now, we can't, by the city order, have more than 250 people in a room. We're looking at alternatives for smaller worship events, smaller prayer events, and smaller fellowship events. In any event, we will be broadcasting a live worship service so that those that are unable to be in that service will have access to it. We're working on a plan now to determine how many people we can effectively and safely have in the room and how many people we can effectively put in alternative venues, formats, and services. We don't have answers to all these questions yet, but we will moving forward. We're working on these plans because we want you to have access to worship. We want you to have access to fellowship. We want you to have access to prayer. We want you to feel connected to your church. And so we are working on these alternative plans now. We're committed to the welfare of our church. We're also committed to uh, delivering ministry in a way that does not compromise safety or the health of our parishioners. And so as we begin to move forward, I want you to know we're doing everything that we can, and we appreciate your patience. We will, as I mentioned, begin a, a high-resolution uh, uh, stream next week. So next week at 11 a.m., there will be a live Facebook stream. We'll also be archiving that on one of the video sites. We will give you more information about that, so those that are not Facebook users will also have access to the service. Uh, it likely will be on our church website, perhaps in other places, but we will communicate effectively with you on how that is going to be delivered. So that's one improvement that we are looking forward to, and you will be able to access that from wherever you are. Although we can't have more than 250 people in a room, and this will limit what we have been doing as far as format goes, we are not going to allow this to limit what God is doing in Austin. And we're not going to allow it to limit what God is doing in this church and in your life. So I want you to know that we will have to change our plans. We'll have to change the way we deliver ministry. But we will move forward, and God will bless this. There are seven things you can do, and I want you to take these seriously. They're simple, they're practical, but there are seven things that you can do to help us during this time. Number one, I'm asking you to remain committed and to remain unified. It's time for us as New Life Austin to rally together as a church and to be unified in this difficult season. As our usual way of doing things is somewhat disrupted, it's time for us as a church community to look beyond what perhaps the church can do for us and to consider how we can help support our church during this time, how we can bring cohesiveness, how we can bring unity, how we can be a voice that can help rally a consensus, that can help rally momentum, how we can be a participant in bringing that unity and that cohesion and that commitment to our church during this time. Our church, New Life Austin, needs you as much as you need it. And so I'm urging you, number one, to remain faithful and committed, to remain unified to our church. Number two, I want to encourage you to remain flexible. Make every effort to participate in the ministries of the church, whatever those may look like. We welcome your input. We're looking for as much input as we can get. And we will do our best to ensure that your needs are met, to ensure that ministry is delivered in an effective way to you. However, whatever is decided, whatever alternative formats we are, uh, feel are the most effective for our church, I ask that you support those efforts. And so I ask that you remain flexible and that you be willing to make some compromises with us as we try to move forward with a ministry plan that is the most effective for the most number of of people. I want to ensure you that God is not confined by a ministry model and that God is not confined to our tradition. He's not confined to our history. And as we are all flexible, I truly believe we will find new ways in which to minister. We will find new ways, new avenues in which God can speak to us individually and 
collectively as a church as we move forward. Number three, remain committed to your convictions, your daily devotions, and to the Lord. I want you to know that your prayers matter. Your prayers matter a lot. Your faith matters. Your faithfulness matters. Your walk with God is not reliant merely on the way that ministry is delivered by our church on a weekly basis. And although we will continue to deliver ministry and we will continue to be united as a church, we will have opportunities to come together, your faith is lived out every day, Monday through Saturday. And I want to encourage you to take this opportunity to find those, those times of prayer, to find those times of, of reflection, those times where you can be alone with the Word of God, times where you can pray in your home, times where you can seek God together as a family. And so I want to encourage you to remain committed to your convictions, your daily devotions, and to the Lord. Number four, take initiative to reach out to other people. As you can imagine, there are a lot of questions right now in our society. There are a lot of questions in our church. People are uncertain about things, and no one likes uncertainty. And although we have very few, very few cases uh, of the virus actually in our community right now, there's a lot of uncertainty. People have questions. People are wondering what's going on. I want to challenge you this morning to be a voice of faith. I want to challenge you to reach out to others that you may be aware of that are connected to our church, fellow church members, perhaps some of the fringe group, those that maybe are not as connected, uh, our seniors, those that may feel vulnerable. I want to encourage you to reach out and touch those around you in our church. Take that initiative to contact someone. Take that initiative to call someone. You can be that encouraging voice that they need to hear. Speak words of faith. Speak words of hope. Let them know that there is a community, a church, New Life Austin, that is binding together. We're unified. We're moving forward. And they are a part of that as much as you are. So take that initiative to contact others. Number five, remain informed. The church will send out frequent communications, whether it be in this format, email, social media posts, again, broad, uh, uh, broadcasting our services on Sundays. During those uh, broadcasts, you will learn of other information as it's available. All of these ways are ways that you can be informed. And so I ask you to remain informed. Know what is going on in the church. And if you have questions, please call us, email us, talk to one of our leaders. I want you to know what's going on. I want you to know how this impacts you. And I want you to know how you can participate. I want you to know how you can be a part of what we are doing moving forward as a church. Because this is your church. and You're a vital part. And so I want you to remain informed. Number six. I want to encourage you to take care of your health and to respect the health of others. If you do have symptoms of illness, whether it be the virus that is a concern to everyone right now or whether it's some other illness, I want to encourage you to remain at home and not come to the gatherings of the church or other gatherings, whether it's the church or otherwise. I want to encourage you to make sure that you're not part of the challenges that we're facing, and we'll all make that commitment together. And so take care of your health, take care of yourself, take care of your family. And if you have symptoms of illness, stay home. That's a commitment that we're making to each other. It's a commitment that all of us are making. And it's one small way that we can ensure that we are helping move our community forward as we seek resolution for this challenge. Number seven. Continue faithfully in your financial support of the church. This is very important, of course, on two accounts. First of all, it's part of our spiritual discipline, and it's part of our way of living out our faith. But on a practical level, of course, it's how we pay for the ministries of the church. It's how we support our, mis our, it's how we support our missionaries. It's how we accomplish the things that we accomplish. And although we may have a different meeting format, it is still important, and we will still have overhead costs for operating the church. So I want to challenge you to continue faithfully in your financial support of the church. You can give online. If you find that to be easier, you can go to our website, newlifeaustin.com. And if you're looking on a web browser on a computer, there is a menu at the top of the page. On the far right, there is a Give tab. 
If you click on that Give tab, it will take you to a page, and on that page you will see a, a, a form that says Donation Category. You simply put what you're donating for, the, the purpose, whether that's uh, a missions pledge or whether it's tithing, whether it's building program, whatever you're giving to, you can put it in that category. And if you're giving to multiple categories, you can break it up and put the details in that box. After you've done that, right below there is a link to PayPal. You click the link to PayPal and it simply takes you to a page where you can enter your debit card or credit card information and pay that way. Many people do this already. Many of our church members give this way and so many of you are already accustomed to this. If you have any questions at all about that, you can contact our church office again. You can call us, you can email us. If you're doing this on a cell phone, the tab at the top is a drop-down menu from the home page. So if you go to newlifeaustin.com, you'll see in, I believe it's the upper right-hand corner, a menu drop-down. You tap on that and you will see the Give link. Tap the Give link and it will take you to that page that I just referenced. You can also, of course, mail checks, money orders. Many people pay through their banks through a bill pay option, whatever works for you. But I want to encourage us to remain faithful in that so the church can continue to satisfy its obligations and we can continue to carry out ministry. I want to share just a few thoughts with you of encouragement and a few thoughts from Scripture as we bring this to a close. I was thinking of Paul's words to Timothy this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 1, Paul said, Timothy, I remind you to stir up the gift of God that is within you. Timothy evidently was facing a lot of challenges in the church. Timothy seems to have been a timid personality. Timothy seems to have been a younger minister of the gospel. And therefore, there were challenges that he had to face in his youth, in his inexperience, and Paul urges him, Timothy, stir up the gift of God that is in you. And he said, we have not been given a spirit of fear, but we have been given a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. I want to encourage you this morning to not have a spirit of fear, but to stir up the gift of God that is in you. I want to put fear on the notice today in my life and in new life, fear will not rule in this church. It will not rule in our lives. Fear is one of the most crippling emotions. And yes, we have concerns and we have uncertainty, but we're not going to live in fear. And I want to put fear on the notice and simply say, fear, you're not welcome here. And to quote a famous popular song that's being sung a lot today, fear is a liar. Jesus Christ reigns supreme. He reigns over everything. And I want to encourage you to know that you can live by faith and not by fear. We have challenges. Of course we have challenges. But we don't have to be crippled by an emotion that is rooted in something other than the sovereignty of God. God is king over all the earth. He reigns supreme. He has all power. He has all authority. And therefore, fear shall not reign in our lives. Romans... The passage we read from Romans chapter 8 that we all know so well. Paul says, we know that all things work together for good. Now that passage is often misunderstood. It's often misquoted. Paul does not say that all things are good because all things are not good. But what he does say is that all things work together for good. For those who love God, those who are called according to His purpose... What Paul is saying is that there is nothing that comes into the life of a believer that does not comply with the purpose of God. The good things, the bad things, the challenging things, the disappointments, God takes all of that and He formulates it and He works it and He, he takes it and mingles it together and with His blessing, God can even in the negative circumstances pull out of that something that is good. God knows no limitations. God knows no failures. And whatever we face as a church, whatever we face as individuals, whatever we face as a family, whether it's the circumstance that we're talking about today that's of our concern, or whether it's situations in your family, God has no limitations. God can take the things that are, that are, that are the 
um, the roadblocks that have come into our lives, the disappointments, the things that we have no answer for, the things that we are wringing our hands about. God takes those circumstances that are in our relationships and our families, our finances, our health. God takes all of these things and when we put them in the hands of God, and if the ultimate goal is for us to live for Him and to please Him, God takes all of this and He massages it together and He works it. He needs it like a, like a lump of dough and He works it. And when He is done with it, there's something beautiful that comes out of it. God is not limited by whatever circumstances we're facing right now. And I want you to know that God can cook with any recipe. It doesn't matter what you have to work with. It doesn't matter what you don't have. It doesn't matter what you're frustrated about. All things work together for good to those that love God. Therefore, the focus for us is on the loving God. Seek Him with all of your heart. Put Him first. As Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, seek first the kingdom of God. Make God the priority in your life. Listen to the positive voices of faith in your life. Meditate on the goodness of God. And as we seek God, God takes all of these things and He works them together. And what comes out of that is something good. I want to challenge us all to keep our focus on God. I was thinking of the book of Joel this morning. The book of Joel is an interesting book. It's one of the books in the Old Testament, one of the prophets. It's a small book, but a very powerful book full of a history, a segment of history from the nation of Israel. And in the book of Joel, there's, there's a judgment that comes on the people of God. And I'm not likening anything in our current situation to judgment, but I do want to draw some parallels here. There was a nationwide tragedy that had affected the people of God. There was a locust plague and, and a drought that had come upon the land and it had totally decimated the crops. And because there were no crops, there was no water because of the drought, of course, this affected the livestock. There was no food to, to be harvested. There, were, there was no livestock uh, for the purposes that um, it, they, they had the herds. It was, it was all just basically destroyed. And in this, as you read the prophecy, and as you read the, this is what it says in chapter 1, that which the palmer worm have let, has left, the locust has eaten. And that which the locust has left, the canker worm has eaten. And that which the canker worm has left, the caterpillar has eaten. This seems to be a reference of different stages of the life of a locust uh, going through from the larva to the full adult. And he's just saying wave after wave, these things destroyed everything we have. But after, after that happened, God begins to speak through the prophet and he begins to prophesy restoration. And in chapter 2, he calls the people of God to repentance. And he calls them and he says, turn to the Lord. He says, turn to the Lord with your whole heart. He says, not, not just outward ceremonies. Don't just rip your clothes in an outward ceremony of mourning. He says, rip your hearts. In other words, have a true turning to God. If you will turn to God with all your heart, the prophet says, God is going to respond. And then he says later in chapter 2, he gives them this promise. He says, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the years the canker worm has eaten, and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. In other words, all of those things that devastated you, God says, I'm going to restore to you the damage that they, done, they have done. And I want to encourage you this morning that whether you're concerned about the economy right now, and it is a real concern, some of you that perhaps have small businesses, some of you that work in various industries may be hit very hard for this. Whatever your concern in that regard is, or whatever concern you may have concerning other issues in your life, trials you're going through, seasons of life you're going through, whatever those things might take from you, God is able to restore to you. And I want to challenge you that no matter what the source of the of the issue is in our life, our society, our church, no matter the cause, turning to God is the solution. Turn to God. If there's a need for repentance in your life, repent. If there's a need to, to, to make decisions and choices in your life, make those decisions. And if you're already living faithfully for God, maybe you've made those commitments, you've made those consecrations, I want to encourage you to, to live worshipfully. 
I want to encourage you to live with thanksgiving. I want to encourage you to, to keep walking by faith because the solution, the solution is to turn to God. And I want to point all of us heavenward today. We don't know how this will ultimately affect our nation. Obviously, our worship at the church, our model of worship is going to change somewhat. The way we gather is going to change. The way we communicate is going to change. But as we rally together in faith, as we, as Paul told the Romans, as we as a church lift up one voice in worship, as we rally in unity as a church together, God is going to respond to us. I'm looking forward to how God's going to use this. I'm looking forward to how lives are going to be changed as we reach out in different ways. I'm looking forward to how God's going to use the gifts of people in the church as we explore alternative ways together. I'm looking forward to how God is going to, to work in the, the most challenging and complicated situations. And I'm challenging each of us today. Let's look forward in faith to how God's going to work. Let's look forward to, in faith to how God's going to provide. We could focus on the negative, but I want to focus on God. And I want us to turn to God with all of our heart. And I want us to turn to God with everything that we have and to continue in our commitments. Now, most of you are watching at home right now. I want you to gather your family together. I'll give you a few, few minutes to do this. I want you to gather your family together. Um, maybe you're gathered around a, uh, a screen right now watching this. Maybe you have your phone out. Maybe you're in front of a larger screen, wherever you're at in your house. I want you to gather your family. Um, go ahead and yell. Get the kids if they're not in there. Summons them together. Um, in fact, the, the book of Joel said, blow the trumpet in Zion. So blow the trumpet. Get them in there. Um, get together. Uh, tell them to hurry. I want us to pray together. I want us to pray together as a church. And I want you to know, I want you to know that right now that the New Life Austin family is watching this video and that we are praying together right now. All across homes in Austin, Texas, right now, as you join in prayer, this church body is praying. And this, just as we gather on a typical Sunday and lift our voices to God, we are doing the exact same thing wherever you may be. The same voices are being lifted, the same God is hearing it, and the same faith is reaching out. And I want you to know that God is going to hear these prayers and that God is going to respond. Amen. Gather those families together. Why don't you join hands together? Those that are with you there in your living room, wherever you're at. Maybe you're in your car. Um, if you're in your car, pull over to the side of the road somewhere. Uh, but I want to, again, just give you a few more seconds to gather everyone together. And uh, I think we have some on vacation. If you're on vacation, um, hopefully the time zone works out where you can join with us. Um, gather everyone together. And if you happen to watch this later, in today, later today and it's not in real time for you, I want you to do the same. I want you to stop right now and I want you to pray, gather your family together and uh, want us to pray together. Amen. Okay, everybody's together now. I want us to pray. Gather, reach out, touch people that are near you and let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come by the authority of your name. Lord, we're not here because of our goodness, but we're here because of the graces and mercies that you have extended to us. And God, I pray right now that you would put a hedge of protection around our church. I pray a hedge of protection around our families. I pray a hedge of protection around our city, our nation, our world. I pray for believers everywhere. I pray, God, that you would protect and guard our finances, protect and guard our health, I pray for the unity of the believers, the unity of the body, the unity of this church. God, I pray that you would continue to speak and to move in us. I pray, Lord, that right now faith would rise in the hearts of your people. We pray against fear. We pray against anxiety. We pray against discouragement. I pray, Lord, that as we move forward as a church, you would order our steps. I pray that you would give us wisdom. I pray that we would know, Lord, how to go forward in ministry. And God, I pray that there would be a new wave of revival that emerges. Lord, we are not hindered. We are not bound. We are not stifled by circumstance. The church of God is a mighty force. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. God, this church has prevailed in worse circumstances than this, and it will be victorious. God, I declare your victory. I declare every promise. I declare the fulfillment of every prophecy. God, I stand firm on your promises right now in every home, Lord. I pray that faith would begin to rise. I pray that assurance and confidence would begin to rise. 
I want us right now to offer praise. Would you lift your voices in your homes right now to God? Would you just lift a shout, a, a shout of victory to the Lord? Would you give Him praise right now? That's it in your homes right now. Lift a voice of confidence and praise to God. Lord, we worship you today. God, we give you the praise for victory in our church. We give you the praise for victory in our homes. God, you are the God who knows no failure. You will conquer. You will provide. You will keep us. We worship you. We give you all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Be encouraged. Stay informed. We'll let you know what's happening. Go out there and speak faith to someone. God bless you. We'll be in touch soon. Let's go see how the Lord will use us today.